Next speaker is a QA engineer uh, with over seven years of experience. Today he will, be, uh, he will be speaking about Robocop and how Robocop evolved to 2.0. Please welcome to the stage, Matthias Nocek. <laughs> So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Mateusz Najek. I'm a quality insurance uh, engineer and open source enthusiast from Poland, not Holland. And I'm going to tell you about Robocop. Um, do you know Robocop? Yeah. Not, not the movie, right? <laughs> Great. Can you raise a hand if you use Robocop? Well, that's great. <laughs> Haven't expected that, thanks. Well, so Robocop is, uh, is a robot framework called Linter. And what is Linter, you may ask? And it's a tool that reads your code and checks if it's compliant with a specific level of quality. Um, Robocop is a highly configurable tool, but at the same time, it has a great default. So if you want, you can avoid any configuration. And it returns nice and meaningful, meaningful reports within a seconds. So how quality is measured? Robocop has built-in rules that define how code, sh code should look like, and it check your code against uh, these rules. So if there are some violations, it returns messages with a certain level of severity. As you can see, it's errors, warnings, and infos. Oh, sorry. And for those of you who want to know more about Robocop and haven't seen the best talk of last year's Robocop about Robocop, I recommend seeing it, but maybe after my presentation, okay? Okay, so now let's focus on what's new in Robocop 2.0 and what happened in between. So comparing Robocop between last and this year's Robocop, we had 15 releases going from version 1.5 to 2.0, reached half a million donuts, which is just mind-blowing. Thanks. Um, the number of rules increased from 72 to 116, which is over 60% more, and I think we are getting to a reasonable limit here. And there's, of course, support to Robot Framework 5.0. We added a ton of new examples of good and bad practices to show you what is being checked by specific rules. And one of the biggest differences is that we redesigned the rules. So now the custom rules written in Robocop 1 will not be compatible with Robocop 2.0 and vice versa. So generally, it's faster, better, and stronger. So what are the custom rules? We are aware that different teams may have different coding standards and some special requirements that are not covered by the built-in rules, uh, even though there's 116 of them. So Robocop, since he's the greatest cop in the universe, is prepared for everything, and it allows to create custom rules for special needs. So we know what is Robocop now, but before we go further, I want you to listen to one short story. So. Some time ago, a software tester pinged me on LinkedIn and asked about autocomplete for the IDE. So I told him to leave me alone and just ask someone else. Just kidding, of course. Uh, I told him to use Fabio's great LSP with VS Code, and he will get what he wants. By the way, Fabio is a highly skilled community member uh, behind the LSP project. And after a few days, he reached out to me again asking about the differences between Robocop and the old tool RFLint. What I wrote him can be basically summarized, don't read it, uh, by saying that it's like comparing Lamborghini to, to bicycles. So you're not going to drive far on that. And just a few days ago, he came to ask me again this time about how to write a custom rule. And I thought that this guy is just hunting me. <laughs> and I replied, here's the documentation, here's the example connect the docs, and good luck. And guess what? An hour later, he sent me a screenshot of a working custom rule. I was impressed. And I realized that we did a great job at redefining this part of Robocop. I also realized that this is, was the most common question that I was asked since Robocop was created. So since this part is now improved and I have a chance to speak officially to a broad audience, I decided to quickly show how easy it is to write a custom rule and run it with Robocop. How much time do I have left? Five minutes. OK, more than enough. So I will switch quickly to my ID. I just need to check. 
to duplicate the screen. That would be easier. OK, we have it. Um, so this is a placeholder file that I created. It has some imports and a set of rules that I want to create. But before I start writing it, I just want to describe how what custom rule I want to, to write. So here we have a very simple test, test file. It has one test case that does nothing. It doesn't matter. But what matters is that we have settings section here. And you can see uh, that we have a documentation, metadata. And I want to write a custom rule that will check if there is a metadata and if it has a specific word inside it. So, um, and I want also this word to be parameterized. So let's say that I want to write a custom rule that will check if there is a Robocon word in metadata. And I also want to change this word later to see if that rule works. So let's jump to the code. And first of all, I need to, um, I need to define the ID of the new rule. So it will be 2022, of course, and define a rule object. The rule object will start with a rule param. This is the new part in the Robocop 2.0. And the rule param needs to have a word. So I will just go, uh, a name, of course. I will go with a word. Then it needs to have a converter. What is a converter? So if you provide a value for a parameter, you provide it through the command line interface. So it's a string always, and you need to convert it to something else sometimes. This time, we need a string because we need a word. So the converter would be um, string converter. And next, we are going to define the default value for, the, for this param, for this word, which is Robocon. And of course, the last is a description. So let's say wor or required word in metadata. OK, and we continue to define the rule now. So the rule, of course, needs a name. Name for this rule will be word metadata. Then we have a message that uh, will be show when, when the rule is violated. So the message would go like this, word, word. So this will display our word, um, not found in metadata. And the last thing that we need here is, of course, severity. So each rule has a severity. Let's pick just a severity warning. OK, great. And um, let me just quickly check if that's all. Yes. Oh, sorry. The last thing is, of course, rule ID that we need to define. And it's going to be, of course, 2022. Now we need to define a class, a checker class, that will check our code. So let's start with a class. Let's name it mate data checker, And it will inherit from the visitor checker. And in this class, I need to define, um, let me just quickly copy that. That will be used many times. We need to define um, what reports we are going to use within this class, within this checker. and typo. And here, um, we need to define a, defin a method. So the method will be visit setting section. And it's using, it, it's using Robot Framework API. So the first part that you see is visit. And then you have a name of the object, uh, the name of the class that will be checked in our code. So setting section is everything in included under the settings. So we, we are going to travel through all of these elements, check if it's metadata, and if yes, then check what's the value there. So now we, are need, we need to quickly check what's, what's the word that we want to, to find. So we can read it from, the, from our rule. And uh, now we need to loop over the settings. For, for settings in node body, sorry, in node body. We are going to check if this setting is an instance of metadata and required word not in setting name. If this is true, then we need to report the rule. So 
self-report the name of the rule. Then we are going to check what's the node where this rule was violated. So the setting is this place. So thanks to this, we, the Robocop would know in which line it was reported. And the last thing is, of course, our word. So let's check if, that's wor if that works. So I'm going to um, use Robocop and external rules. It's here. And only include this specific rule. So this is the idea of this rule. And I'm going to run it, run it over this example robot. Let's see if that works. I think that works. So as you can see, word Robocop not found in metadata in line four. Let's check. Yes, in line four, we don't have Robocom word, right? But now quickly, let's check if it works, if I would change this value of this word param, because I want it to be configurable. So I want to configure the rule with this ID. I want to configure this word and change, change it to cookies. And let's see. Yep, it's in line three. So in line three, we don't have cookies. So it was reported, right? That's how it works. So I hope you can now write your own custom rules uh, within Robo Robocop 2.0. And let's go quickly jump to the presentation. Yep, so basically, uh, can you see it? Yes. So that's it. I hope now you, you are able to write your custom rules using Robocop 2.0. Please do, don't forget to give us a star on GitHub. If you, don't, if you have any questions, come and ask me on the venue. I'll be happy to talk. And that's it. Thanks, and have a great Robocop. Thank you, Matthias. Uh, next up, we have one remote presentation. But before that, I'll answer one question that we got. What's the difference between Robocop and Sherlock? It's uh, the other is a detective and the other is uh, half robot, half cop. I, I think that's the uh, <laughs> difference. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but find so, him and ask ask the question from him. He, he he's going to give you the correct question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.